G'day guys. Car A is traveling 5 meters per second to the right. Car B is traveling 10 meters per second. Find the velocity of A relative to B. So what's happening here? We've got car A just here drawn in blue and it's traveling 5 meters per second to the right. We've got car B in green and it's traveling 10 meters per second at the 60 degree angle just here. And we're asked to find out what the velocity of A relative to B is. So that means if you were the driver of B, while watching car A, what would, you what would you see its velocity as being? Okay, well the way to solve this problem is to invoke the relative velocity formula, which is the velocity of A is equal to the velocity of B plus the velocity of A relative to B. This is the formula we're going to use. Okay, now let's explore each of these terms individually. What is the velocity of A. Well, it's kind of already given to us. We know it's five meters per second, but that's just half the picture. You'd need to write this as five meters per second to the right. That's where this I unit vector comes in. This means it's to the right. Okay, don't forget I'm gonna be using my standard axis just here, standard non-rotating axis, X, Y, just there. Okay, so this is five meters per second to the right. Let me actually draw meters per second just here. And if you wanted to, I, I, I usually do this, I'd write this vector as five zero to show that it's five meters, to the sec five meters per second to the right and zero meters per second up or down, okay? Now what is the velocity of B? Well, it's a little bit more tricky because it's at a slant. If you were to draw the velocity vector just here, it looks like that, right? And we know the magnitude of this vector is 10 meters per second. And we know that it's actually at a 60 degree slant just here, which means that we can calculate from trigonometry its horizontal component, which will be 10 cosine 60, and its vertical component, which will be 10 sine 60. All right, now let's talk about direction. Well, we know this thing must be traveling to the right, and we know it must be traveling down, right? This is just summation of vectors. I hope I'm not losing you here. So if you wanted to describe VB in vector format, it would be 10 cosine 60 I minus 10 sine 60, sine 60 J. Now, once again, I, I usually don't like writing things in terms of I and J format. So let me just change that up a little bit and write this as 10 cosine 60 and minus 10 sine 60. Now, in case you're a little bit confused as to where this minus came from, it's minus because this thing's downwards, right? If this thing was upwards, then it would be positive 10 sine 60. That's because we're using our standard Cartesian non-rotating axis just here, okay? And don't forget meters per second here, and of course, meters per second here, okay? So now it becomes a matter of rearranging this equation just here to solve for VAB. Well, we know that VAB, if we were to literally just arrange this formula, VAB is gonna be equal to VA minus VB. So let's write that out. VAB is going to be equal to VA, VA minus VB. And if we were to plug that in step by step, it'll be this. It's equal to 5, 0 minus, let's see, this will turn out into just 5, and this turns out into minus 8.66. That's if you go through the maths and evaluate the cosines and sines. Right? So what does this turn into? Well, this will turn into 5 minus 5, which will be 0, and this will turn into 0 minus minus 8.66, which will be 8.66 meters per second. And this is actually our answer. We could box this off and get full marks for this if we wanted to, but let me just quickly describe the intuition behind this. We've shown, amazingly, that the velocity of B, the horizontal velocity of B, is 5 meters per second, which is the same as the velocity of the car of A, right? So of course, from the perspective of B, A is not gonna be moving to the right. That's why we've got a zero here. From the perspective of B, A is not gonna be moving to the right because they're both traveling with the same horizontal velocity. That explains this top part just here. So that should just be a little bit of a intuition behind this problem. It's not just mindless mathematics. You can actually understand this at an intuitive level too. Cheers.